today I will talk about soil preparation and planting and its source is Encyclopedia of Gardening by Royal Horticultural Society. First, the influence of different soil types. Bulbs grow in a range of soil types, habitats, and climates throughout the world. The conditions in which they occur naturally indicate their needs in cultivation. Most hardy bulbs are from Mediterranean type climates and thrive in a warm, sunny site in freely draining soils that warm up quickly in spring and become dry in summer. Some species tolerate heavy soils that are moist during the growing season, as long as they are baked dry in summer. If the soil is mo moderately fertile and humus rich, many bulbs increase steadily from year to year by seed or vegetative means. Most prefer a near neutral or slightly alkaline soil. Good drainage is vital because most bulbs are prone to rot while dormant if, it, if the soil is wet and poorly aerated. A few occur in the wild in riverside or swamp, swamp plant habitats. These thrive in most or even permanently wet soil that do not dry out even in summer. Light soil. Sandy or light soil usually warm up rapidly in spring and provide a good drainage that most birds need, although they are often deficient in humus and nutrients. They can plant a well rotted garden compost or manure before planting and, in early spring, top dress with a balanced fertilizer applied at the marker's recommended rate. Always incorporate it always incorporate manual below the level at which the bulbs are planted to avoid the risk of disease or chemical damage. If using fresh manure, dig it in at least three months before planting. More fertile sandy soils and loams benefit from extra organic matter, but fertilizer dressing is unnecessary in the first year. In rock gardens, dig in coarse grift to make up one third of the top 30 centimeters of soil for the extra drainage that dwarf burbs need. Sandy area. Shade loving birds most often occur naturally in woodland habitats but grow well in any shady situation as long as the soil is properly prepared. It should be rich in nutrients and humus and also retain moisture. Incorporate plenty of leaf mold or some other organic matter, such as well-rotted manure or garden compost, before planting. Acid-loving woodland bulbs thrive in the pit garden where at least half the soil is leaf mold, pit substitute, or pit. Heavy soils. Heavy clay soils often need a lot of work in to improve their drainage. On very poorly drained soils, a drainage system must first be installed to grow bulb successfully. Core sand or grift at the rate of at least 1.5 to 2 bucket square meters dug into the whole planting area will be required to make a significant difference. Heavy application of well rotted organic matter also improves the soil structure and therefore the drainage. Next is planting time. Dry bulbs should be planted as soon as possible after purchase. If the bulbs have been stored over winters, plant them at the end of their dormant period before they start growing. Pot ground bulbs may be planted after purchase throughout the season or kept in their pots until after they die down and treated as dry bulbs, including those that bloom in late summer under cover and bulbs in the green in early to mid spring. Bulbs are usually best planted several to a large hole dug out with a sp spade. Alternatively, they may be planted singly. Do not make the outline of the planting area or the spacing of the bulbs sy symmetrical as these will look unnatural and if one or two bulbs fail, they leave un unsightly gaps. In a rock garden, remove any top dressing before planting bulbs and replace it afterwards. Planting depth and spacing. 
plants will be two to three times their own depth of soil above them, deeper in light than in heavy soils, and two to three verbs wide apart. Remove soil to the correct depth, fork some bone meal into the bottom of the hole, and insert the verbs. Occasionally, it is difficult to identify the top of a verb, especially with rootless cyclamen tubers. The upper surface is usually flatter than the lower or sometimes concave. Corridas tubers can be almost globular, but there is usually some sign of shoot growth on the top. If it is impossible to be sure, plant the bulb on each side. Replace the soil, breaking down any clothes. Firm gently so that there are no air spaces around the bulbs. Plant each bulb individually at the same level as it was planted before. This is indicated by the color, color change between the green top growth and the chlorotic yellow-green leaf bases that were on the ground. Water thoroughly after planting. Snowdrop bulbs should never be allowed to dry out. If there has no, if there has to be a delay in planting. Put the bulbs in a slightly damp room, base compost, and keep cool until needed. Thank you.